you have a belief where the author of Philippians is saying he was godly nature, having all the natures of God to begin with, and then he gave it away. He humbled. He gave it away. So what happened to his knowledge? Okay, a, a, a good analogy is like a cloak. He took off his heavenly cloak when he came on to, down to earth. Is it possible to not know while you're knowledgeable? Say that again. If you are a being who is all knowledgeable God, is it possible for you to somehow limit access to your knowledge and not know? If I'm God, yes, because all things are possible unless it contradicts So you can really have power over your attributes? Well, if I'm God, of course. So can you have power over your attribute of life and say, tomorrow I'm no longer alive, I'm dead tomorrow? If you're God. Hold on, hold on. What are we God about? is a being who is ever living. I, I want, no, no, I want you to understand the common right. ground that we have about concept okay, of God. Yeah. Do you believe God is ever living? Always in existence and always will be? Yes. Can your concept of God, can you have a room where this God suddenly says, from tomorrow, I'm not going to be ever living, I'm going to cease to exist. Is it possible? Yes. So he can be, from tomorrow, not in existence anymore, that's it. No, no, I'm agreeing with you when I say yes. No, he, he can't not, he can't cease to exist. So he cannot go against his already attribute of what? Being ever living. Okay. If God has an attribute of ever living, anything that contradicts that, it's not going to happen. It's okay. impossible. It okay. will contradict the very nature of what you've approved. If God is all knowledgeable, you cannot have then suddenly he becomes less than all knowledgeable. Because by definition, right. all knowledge. Why are you saying ever living is the same as knowledge? Okay. All knowledgeable means what? You know everything or yeah. you know something? Uh, yeah, no, it's everything. Yeah. If you know everything, yeah. while you know everything, yeah. for all times. You know how to silo off your knowledge as well. If you know everything for all times, yeah. something in the future, yeah. what's going to happen tomorrow? Right. While you know it's going to happen tomorrow, well, can you then not know that? Say that again? Why while, you last bit? while you know what's going to happen tomorrow, yeah. because you're all knowledgeable, yeah. can you then 10 minutes later not know that? Me personally? No, God, the one who knows <laughs> the it. The God that you understand. The God that you accept to be all knowledgeable. The triune God? No, the God that knows what's going to happen tomorrow, yeah. 10 minutes later, can you not know? I feel like you're trying to snare me into it's, something. No, no, it's Hold easy on. to understand. No, it's not. No, no, because you're this is, this is intellectual reasoning, not okay, emotional okay. attachment to, no, 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 to discussion. No, no. Yeah, intellectual yeah, yeah. reasoning. It's if you have, you have a have an emotional attachment because no. you oppose the belief that you're please, please, against. please. If you have a God yeah. who knows what's going to happen tomorrow yes. and doesn't forget, yes. then 10 minutes later, can the same God not know what's going to happen tomorrow? 10 minutes later? It yeah. depends. Are you talking about... Tell me. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you... God, look, are you talking about God coming down onto earth no. and forgetting certain bits? No. I'm not saying that happened. I'm talking about so God who right? knows what's going to happen tomorrow right. and then says, 10 minutes later, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Is it possible? No. Right. Oh, well, I mean, it's possible. He could say it. How is it possible? Well, he, he, he could silo off that bit of information. Yeah, can I make a suggestion? That if you already agree he knows it tomorrow, what's going to happen tomorrow, yeah. then how is he then, then not know? Because he can choose to forget, like our sins. How can he choose? He chooses to, to forget our sins. He no. says that in his Forget, nature, he's able forgetting to forget sins is not not remembering the sins in that sense. Like you don't know. No, forgetting sins is letting aside. That's not forgetfulness. Maybe he chose not to know the hour. No, no. Choosing can God, in your concept, choose to cease to exist? No, and we've answered that already. No, no. Why not? Because it's why can't God to send Why not? Nature. Sorry. I'm why no, not? The reason that God can't cease to exist was because there'd be nothing else and that would go not against, it, that would, that um, would contradict God. That would contradict what you've affirmed, that he is ever living. Right. A being that ceased to exist cannot be ever living. So anything that you affirm first as ever living, contradictory to that is ceasing to exist. So you have to reject that. If you're all knowledgeable at all times, anything that contradicts that you have to reject. Forgetfulness being ignorant contradicts all knowledge, all knowledge, uh, all knowingness. You have to reject that. So if you have a concept where God, all knowledgeable God, somehow limits his knowledge and doesn't know, you should really say that doesn't make sense. If you're saying, yeah, if he's a separate God, but he's not. He's part of that one God. Look, look, look. The same son of God, if he had the all knowledge to begin with, yeah. then he can never become ignorant. What does humble in yourself mean? If you was going to humble yourself I'm, and come I'm, on The to reason earth. why I say this, so Mark 13, 32, I think, this is talking about, no one knows the hour, only the Father knows. Yeah. So he says, not even the angels in heaven, yeah. not even any human beings or anyone, That's right. not even the Son, yeah. but only the Father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If only the Father knows, yeah. does the Son know ever? 
Okay, you yourself said the son is different to the father. No, I said the son, by definition, you can't call it having being attributes of God. Because God, by definition, is a perfect being. The son doesn't know the hour, meaning he's limited in his knowledge. It's not perfect. It's an like imperfect when you say being. God, you mean father. I hear no, no, father. Individual. Like when what? you say God. No, any saying... being, any being. Is Jesus a being or not? Yes. Right. Any being who is claimed to be God need to be perfect. No, I disagree. Then it's an imperfect God. No, no, no. It's not God. That's what you mean by perfect as well. Perfection is perfection in the attributes. So is this being independent or dependent? If your being is dependent then you're not god i disagree i disagree so so, so, so i think so if, you can, if i came down if i was god and i came down onto human earth to forgive the sins of the world i'm going to be a lover of that god you know i'm going to be the best example of what it's going to be like to be in submission to god because i'm leading by my example so i'm going to come down okay. and i'm going to show you so therefore Did, was christ married no so how can you be an example in your marriage tell me he was only there for three years. Married, for so three, years. are you saying in his three years he was an example for all life affairs? So, what would you do in divorce? Well, did he divorce? Did he get married? He said not. He said not to unless there was. Well, was he married? Did he have children? No. So how can he be a living example for anything? Because he, he used to be part of. No, 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 no. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. He said an example. Yeah, okay. He is an example. If you're talking about uh, knowledge. How can he? How can he speak into that if he didn't have knowledge? Jesus was about. No, I was just answering. Carpenter. I was just answering your question about. No, 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 he was no, a perfect no, example. No, I'm, I'm saying he was perfect not. Example. And you're saying because he was deficient in knowledge, he wasn't married, he didn't have kids. So how can you give no. um, guidance to two, two different arguments. My first argument is constantly theological. It will remain all the time. You need to have an intellectual response to it. A being yeah. who is imperfect in his attribute is not a perfect being. A being which is not perfect is not even worthy of being called God or worthy of worship. The being who is worthy of worship is a perfect being. If you worship, if you, if you worship a tripod, yeah. I say it doesn't deserve to be worshipped. Yes. If you worship a perfect being who is all powerful or all knowledgeable, he has all the attributes of perfection, that being definitely deserves our worship. Yes. I but a being like Christ, yeah. who is dependent on someone, yeah. doesn't deserve anyone's worship. He himself worships someone else. Yeah. Like, so, like so, I said, if I came down onto earth, I'm going to worship the real God. Okay. Do you, worship, do you worship the God of Christ or do you worship Christ as well? I believe they're one and the same. This they're not one and the same. This is where we're mixing it up. This is where we're God. saying, they're not, they're not God. I believe a, they are a, a God is perfect. Jesus yeah, is in imperfect. Your view, what you're talking about is the Father. Okay. Are you saying the Father also has imperfection in it? It depends what you mean by perfection. Okay. I don't believe that. Okay. But it sounds like Give me an example. Give right. me an example of imperfection that we dis discussed. The Father has. I said I don't believe so. Right. So the Father fits in the criteria of a perfect God and deserving worship, but the Son doesn't. He chose. It's, it's not about choosing. You, it's about choosing. If I'm God, can you choose I can't not to be God? Down to earth as the all-powerful, okay. can, can a God die for your sins? Can Listen, can a God choose to become non-God? It's not about non-God. It's, yeah, it's, non it's not of choice. It's, it's not about being non-God. It's not like Jesus said, Jesus, oh, I'm not going to be God now. Did Jesus not become non-God? He didn't become non-God. What no, did he become? human, 100% God. When he was 100% God and 100% human, yeah. out of 200%, he's 50% yeah. God. See, this is wrong now. Wait, wait, well, slow, slow down, slow down, slow down. When you have a being, you have differentiated between him, he's God and he's man. In totality, he's 50-50. No. No, why not? Why not? Tell me why not. Because you're, you're applying human standards to this. Hang on. I am only human. I can only like apply human standards. Or you can ask the Holy Spirit to guide your mind to um, understand. Look, look. So now you're asking me to believe in something no, that no, I don't I'm, believe. Uh, no, I'm saying there's another option. <laughs> what option? To ask the Holy Spirit to is guide the, you so you can understand. Is the Holy Spirit God? Yes. Who said that? I just said it. Who, does God the Father say Holy Spirit is God? And worship Him as well? Or God the Father, or God says, Throughout the human history, only worship God and none else. Okay, but God, if we think of it like this, God could be like an office. A family. Well, no, like an office. That's what you believe. What? Father and son makes a family? Yeah, in, in yeah. human terms, yeah. Yeah, so God is a father but and son is a family. Terms. So, in human terms, there's yeah. a family of three gods working together as one God. 
One government, no, not one God. office, they're not three one parliament. It's not polytheism. Okay, let's understand that. Jesus yep. is part of God. Is he equal to the Trinity, less or more? What? Or same? What? The Trinity which makes one God. Yes. Is Jesus same as the Trinity? More than the Trinity? Less than the Trinity? He is the Trinity. What are you talking about? He's part of the Try you. Part. No, no, no. Hold on. Try you. Okay. So there's unity. Let, let's, not, let's not really understand the Trinity. You're not going to. No, 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 no. My friend, logic. my friend. Sorry, I've forgotten your name already. Ryan. Ryan, Ryan. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Together they make three gods or one God? Well, we said it already, isn't it? One God. Together. Remember the key point. Together they're one God. Yeah. Together. Yeah. The key point is together. Yeah. Individually, can they be one God? Individually? Yeah, individually. Not three gods? No. Can they be one God individually? The same one God that we said, individually, for example, is the Father the one God? The one God? Individually? Part of this. Part is part of less union. than the whole. Thank part you. Of, no, part of the union. Look, when you have a part, the whole is greater than the parts. Trinity is the whole. Trinity is greater than the parts, is greater than the Father. Okay. That means but the Father is less than the whole, less than the Trinity. Okay. Okay. You can write it down in, in mathematical syllogism and it will be very clear. Oh, let's use if, if, to prove look, 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 as if. No, no, no. If, if, you just said parts. Parts okay. and whole. So the way that you if, inferred what I meant from parts was different to what I implied. Parts and the whole. Is the part and the whole the same thing? What, what you, what you is it the same thing? What are you saying? Never the same what thing. What are you saying? You're, you're saying is part and the whole the same thing as yeah. what? In any concept. Because I feel like you're leading me into a snare. I'm not leading to anything. I'm just simply analyzing, assessing, and critiquing this concept. If you have Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, together they make one God. Yes. Together. So individually, it is obvious okay. that it is not one God. Okay. If I, if, as Thomas saw Jesus and he said, my Lord and my God, was he calling Jesus one God? Listen. If, if Satan, I'm answering, I'm, I'm answering. If Satan is called by people God, doesn't make anyone God. If Jesus was called God by even his closest disciple, it doesn't make him God. We are discussing the concept of oneness of God. If you have a trinity which is one God, the Father is a part of the trinity, not the whole. Being a part must be less than the whole. So if the trinity is one God, the but Father is less than one God. You out like that. You just set part. Yes, but you can't separate those parts oh, out. SubhanAllah. You're talking about Listen. mechanics where you can take off look, the look, 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 look. out there. Oh, there's a separate Within the unity, like within the unity, yeah. the Father is not the whole. Is it? Is it the whole trinity? Within the, say, within the whole trinity, is the Father the whole trinity? They're interjoined. Is the Father himself the whole trinity? They're interjoined. I didn't ask you that. I, I know you didn't ask me that. I'm asking you. Asking a question based on a false assumption. It's not a false assumption because you have togetherness makes one God. If you said three gods, I would not even have this discussion. Yeah, you believe in three gods. It makes sense that three gods because individually each one is God, another God, and another God, and you can keep adding, you know, and so on. So you restrict it to tritheism, tri unitheism. So if you said I was a tri unitheist, believing three gods makes one family or one government yeah, yeah, or one yeah, office. Exactly. Yeah. I'm happy with that, but you are you cannot be a believer in wor wor worshipper of one God. Exactly. One God is where he's not made up of parts. One God is one. He is one. He doesn't have father, mother, children, brother, uncle, are daughter, assuming, niece. Are you assuming that God is like a human? No, I'm saying God is not a family where he has an uncle or a brother or yeah, a sister, okay, okay, father, yeah. daughter or son, whatever. Right. Because the moment you have those things, the question is, who are they? They are other gods. You know, in the Greek pantheon, Isis, Osiris, Apollo, Diana, yeah, they yeah. are separate gods. Yeah. They have God's families. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. In Christianity, it's just a restriction of three gods, but because you don't want to be identified with paganism or polytheism, you say that we don't believe in three gods, we believe in one God. That's where I say, no, you have to be intellectually honest and say, that's not one God. That's not monotheism. That's tri-unitheism. Okay.
but it sounds like you just can't, because you can't comprehend. It's not comprehension. One, hold on, hold on, let me finish. Because you can't comprehend that one thing can exist independently and in unity as one thing, three things, sorry, can't in, um, exist as one thing, doesn't mean that. Because it, you can't understand it, doesn't mean that it's not real. Uh, I didn't say well, I didn't understand energy, it. In fact, I understood it. Do you understand it? Yeah. You understand I understood. No, I understood Trinity like this. Yeah, but you said it's as, as in the Trinity. I never said it's a mystery. Do you know who says it's a mystery? No, I didn't say you said it's a mystery. Do you know who says it's a mystery? It's, okay, and do you know the okay, reasons? Okay, okay, hold on. First off, what about the H2O? Line? What about it? The, the three separate things that can take... H2O, form. right? You have yeah. hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen is not oxygen, and oxygen is not hydrogen. H2O being water, gas, or ice. Okay. That's what I'm saying. So it is. So you are falling into what we call modalism. It just changes shape. But no, no, in, no, in, in Trinity, of how it can but, be but the same and yet separate. I ask you kindly. I, I request you go into Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Right? There's quite a few encyclopedias of philosophy, and you will see the entry in Trinity, and all the heresies of Trinities throughout the centuries. The one the example that you've used is, is the example of modalism, where you know the Sabelli and others came up with God has different functions, different forms. Sometimes he acts like a son, sometimes he acts like a father, and so on. Then you see like it's one being, but acting different times differently. But in this case, it's not like that. You have three persons, all the same time, always in existence. They are three individually. The Father is God. That's what the Creed says, the Athenian Creed, for example, the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. But then it adds saying, they're not three gods, but one God. That's that's just a way out of saying, oh, I don't want to be labeled as a, 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 a polytheist. Yeah. It doesn't follow from them. So if you go and research this article, several articles in there, um, one of them is, um, which is an uh, internet philosophy website. What's it called? I can't remember now. Stanford, Stanford University philosophy website, Trinity, an article there and gives you all this. None of them make sense. The one makes sense to say when Trinity is something that makes sense is either a heresy. A heretical belief, which is like, you know, um, there's three gods and one god and so on, it will make sense. But the orthodox Christian belief will never make sense. Intellectually. Yeah? Well, so this is for you to research. To How does it make sense when the father himself yeah. he is not the Trinity and yet he is God, and the Trinity is one God. So you okay, the way that you're explaining it does sound confused. It does sound confused. What's wrong with my explanation? Because it's not grasping the truth of what you're trying to describe. <laughs> the truth can be only derived from the text what you believe no, to be revelation, no, right? No, what about... Revelation. Hold on, hold on. Revelation. Okay, so revelation. There, there's... Has revelation told you in any of your scripture that God is three in one, ever? I, I believe that the Holy... Hold on, yes. Where? Yes, can you on, quote me on. one scripture? Hold on, I, I can, but I've, I don't want to get into all of that with, where we're bringing out... No, no, just, just, just mention one scripture that you've read that says God is three in one. Um, baptize people in the name of the Father, the Son, and I'm the Holy Spirit. I'm not saying ba baptize in the name of this doesn't mean God is three in one. I'm saying where yeah, no, God yeah, is... in context, it, it is saying no, no, that, because why would you baptise someone in another name? Um, did they do that? Did they do what? Did they baptise in the name of these three persons? They didn't. How do you know they didn't? You can read Paul's epistles and letters and it tells you they didn't do that. Well, hold on, they, they baptised... What, so no one they was did not, They did not baptise. What about the Ethiopian that was... No, no, no. In the very the scripture itself, yeah. they did not baptise in his name. And, scholars, and the scholars, scholars will say, this is Matthew... Uh, something 28, something, I can't remember the exact references towards the end of Matthew. This is a later interpolation. This is a scholarly opinion. But it doesn't... You're talking about the unit. I'm talking about go and baptize in the name... Yeah, oh, if I'm oh, not mistaken. The Great Commission. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this doesn't prove that God is three in one. You need okay. to have a verse, something like this, okay? The Father and the Spirit and, and, and the Son, they're three in one. There is no such verse. In fact... <laughs> yeah, there's no, there's if no there were such verse... If there was such that verse, is a, that is a really wait, wait, wait. strange wait a requirement. Second. It's not a requirement. In the old time, okay. It would be in the, okay. If God came on earth, would he not make clear to people that I'm God? Yes. Okay. Tell me to one. Did he tell his mother that he's God? Is it, it's not recorded ah. that I know where he's told his mother. Did, yeah. Which of his disciples he said, I'm God and you should worship me? To be fair, the angel told me. No, no. Many to what? The angel told Mary about how special this child is. No, well, that he's going to be God? Uh, I don't know the exact no. words that was used. Doesn't, doesn't. So when God comes along in your belief, let's understand this a bit logically. Yeah. God comes along, 
Did he tell the people, I'm God on earth now, you should um, follow me, believe in me and worship me? Not in those words. Why not? Why did he? Because it weren't part of the massive prophecy that well, all we, of the Old Testament... So are prophecies. Hold on, I'm answering the question. Okay. All, it is a, and I believe that all of the Torah, all of the Old Testament was all pointing towards Jesus. So As what? So he was the fulfillment. As what? The Messiah, the promise, the thing that's... The Messiah to... will be sent by God. Yeah, I believe that. But you say he is God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In the Christian belief, he's the everlasting son, not the yeah, everlasting no, father. I know, I know that. So it doesn't apply to him. Trinity Secondly, the government will be upon his shoulders. There was no time the government was upon the shoulder of Christ. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold Two on. things out of all, all, fair, all authority was given to him on earth and in heaven. Right? That verse all says authority. that verse says the government will be upon his shoulders. Yeah. Did he have any government upon his shoulders? Okay. He didn't. Do you believe in only one coming of Christ? Do you no. believe he's coming back? So, again, right? so, so there, therefore it's not all fulfilled. So that means coming. that means it doesn't apply to him. You can no, all, does it? No, it just means it doesn't apply to his first no, no, coming. No, no. It hasn't fulfilled. Because you can only apply this verse when the second coming has come and he's fulfilled those, for example. But again, you have the same problem of everlasting father, being called everlasting father. He's not the everlasting father in your belief. It cannot apply to him. Contextually, it cannot apply to him. It applies to someone else. That's why I'm saying context is important. So you cannot, I mean, that this is surprising. Father, actually, the way that it's described, is it the He same shall be called that, yeah. everlasting father. Yeah. No that, one called him everlasting father. Okay, no okay, one. Okay, okay. But that term in Hebrew is different. That term father isn't the same father that's attributed to God. No, no, everlasting father. father. Are you saying now yeah. Christians are calling Jesus everlasting father with the, the same Hebrew term? No. There you go. It doesn't apply to him. So if you go to the Old Testament, has God, when he spoke to the Jewish prophets yeah. and passed on this message, ever told them that he is God and one and only and to be worshipped? Sorry, say, say that again. In the Old Testament. Has in the Old Testament time, yeah. God that spoke through the prophets and messengers, delivered the message to the people, did he ever tell them, I am God and you should worship me and there's none else. There's no God before me and there's no God after me. There's no, no other God besides me. So he did make it clear. So when Jesus came, and said the same thing, when Jesus claiming when, when, when Jesus come, did he ever make it clear to any anyone that he was God? Yeah, when he said, I am the first and the last. Yeah, who, who would call himself that? He, how can he be the first and the last when Father is the first and the last? So why, why how is many, he lying well, then? Uh, no, I'm going to ask you to, to elaborate. Oh, you're asking me the question. How many, how many, how many first and the last do you have? Can there be more? One? Can you just make it both because it feels like you're... you're I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, sorry, sorry. If you feel that okay, I'm trying to lead you somewhere, no. This is just an assessment of this, uh, or a critique of this belief, that's all. God is the one and only being who is the first, before him there's nothing. And he will be the last meaning, there will be whom nothing. Yeah. The Alpha and the Omega. Mm -hmm. Can you have another Alpha and another Omega? No, that's my point. If Jesus says he's the Alpha and Omega, yeah. can the Father be Alpha and Omega? Yeah. No, you can't. You can. You'll have two Alphas. They're all God. No, no. You cannot have two Alphas. You can't have two Alphas, no. Can you have two gods? Can you have two gods? There's one God. Okay, can you have two gods? So I don't believe in two gods. You cannot have two gods. If you can have two gods, you cannot have two Alphas and two Omegas. Right. I know. So if there's two alpha and two omegas, that's two gods. No, but there's not two alpha and two omegas. There's only one god. Yeah. There's one alpha and omega, yeah. and yeah. they are the same. If if the father is alpha, how can how can the son be also alpha? You're talking about so you're talking how can about it be? you're talking about the son while he was on earth. In no, a no, 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 no. Before the universe was even created. So that's what Jesus said. I am. Before Abraham was, I am. I am what? That's the name of God that no. Moses was given. Hold on. Again, when, when I mean, Moses said, who shall I tell them yeah. that God is commanded? God said, I am who I am. Okay. So when Jesus claimed that you, title, there's another title. That's do, you know, do you know something? Do you know something? How our Christian scholars somehow mislead the laity? If you read this passage about before Abraham was, I am, in context, do you know what the message Christ is trying to say? Why don't you, why don't you okay. let me know what you're So saying? the Jewish people were accusing of something. He says, oh, Abraham saw my day, he rejoiced. He says, how? how can, I'm paraphrasing the story. He says, how? You're not even 50 years old. How could you say you've met Abraham? So the context is, he is saying, Abraham and Christ, yeah, they met. Just like our prophets from Allah, Islam, they met in the Mi'raj, other prophets. Because it's a different reality, different dimension. So they ask him, you're not even 50 years old, and you said you have actually met Abraham? At that point, he answered, before Abraham as I am. So what was he trying to say? 
Would you? Oh, come on now. Wait, wait, wait. I told you, it's in context. Using one of the names of God. Excuse me. And it's saying okay. that I predate Abraham. Good, good. So, uh, shall we look at the Greek and see, and then we... See. Why? The reason I'm saying, okay, there are many names of God in, in Judaism and Christianity. Yeah. Okay? One of the names of God is El Shaddai, El okay. Elyon, okay? Hashem. Okay, let's use the, the word. Name. Let's use the name Hashem. Yeah, it just means the name. No, no, name. No, it means the name Hashem. El Shaddai means what? The strong one. Okay. What? Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay fine, fine. My point is this. So now let's use this name. Are you okay? Yeah. Let's use this name back into the original. If the original name is Yahweh or El Shaddai, El Shaddai is not. If the original name was Yahweh, let's put it back the original name. Now. Names, your name, Ryan, in my language, when I say I met Ryan, I'm not going to say I met, um, I, I translate your name. I say I'll meet Ryan. And when you go and say I met Mansur, which is not an English name, but it's an Arabic name, you'll say you met Mansur. Names, we leave them as they are. So the names of God, let's leave them as they are. The name of Abraham, we leave it as it, are, as it is. Name well, of God, Abraham. No, Abraham is Abraham, Ibrahim. Yeah, same name. Pronouncing it differently. Fine, it's, it's still Abraham. No, it's, it's not. It's, okay. You say it, it differently. No, no. Abraham and Ibrahim, yeah. there's certain variations in terms of how we say it, okay? Exactly, yeah. But, but the, the meaning, thing, right? I'm not talking about the oh, meaning of translation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Father of nation, that's what Abraham means. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not going to translate and say father of nations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to use his name. Abraham of Abraham. Yeah, Abraham of in Greek. Before Abraham was Yahweh. So I'm Jesus now. You are the Jewish people who are accusing me of saying, how can you have met Abraham? And the response I'm giving you is this. Before Abraham of was Yahweh. So I've just used the same statement. Now, can you tell me what have I told you? Before Abraham was Yahweh. Before what? Before it Abraham. Like an incomplete sentence. No, I didn't say incomplete. I've just made the complete sentence. Yeah, but it sounds to so, me because it, it doesn't sound grammatically correct. That's the problem yes. of the text, right? No, so, I okay, now. Yes, so in the correct, Greek, in the Greek, it says very clearly, you know, we're gonna stay, we're gonna my Abrahamov, ego, Amy. Ego, Amy is the word that is translated for I am. So let's get back ego, Amy, back to its place as I am, uh, Yahweh. So before Abraham was Yahweh, you would say, I have, I'm not making any claim that I am Yahweh. The only way I should be making the claim I am Yahweh, I have to use I am twice. In I am intense, like I am, I was, I will be. So I should say, before Abraham was, I am Yahweh. But in here he says, before Abraham was Yahweh. So he's not making any claim that he's Yahweh. So that is why, that is not a spin, not a spin. I encourage you to go and research the text in Greek. Look at the understanding what it means in Greek language, context what it means. It doesn't mean that he's claiming using the name of God because it ego Amy sense, because what ego then? ego saying? ego Amy has been translated. It means I am, I was, I am as a tense. So, what does so, it mean, then? so, so in what here, in here, it means saying? that I was there. That's what he's trying to tell them. Well then, hang on, the same thing. hang on, hang on. No, it's not. Just because someone claims I was there doesn't mean that he was God. When Prophet Muhammad met all his prophets. He would say, I was there with them. It doesn't make him God. Just because you are transported in another dimension and you met other prophets, it doesn't make you God. No, but this sounds, yeah, this he is not saying, more, he is not claiming, no, yeah. no. This is the contextual understanding. He's not claiming to be God. He's making clear. Then there is other people, Jeremiah, I think, God knew him even though before he was in his womb. God knew him. It doesn't make, it doesn't mean he was God. No. So, when it I comes to when we talk about when we talk about the divinity of Christ, why is it that we find difficulty in finding verses from your own scripture? Look, what we find instead is this: Jesus says, "You should worship the one who's in heaven," and you should say, "O oh, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy wait, wait, wait. Thy will be done." Excuse me. Sorry, 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 sorry. Thy will be done. Thine is the kingdom forever and forever. So according to Christ, who should worship? The one on the earth or one in heaven? One in heaven. Who should call and worship? The one who is in heaven. Whose is the kingdom and glory forever and forever? The one in heaven. Who is called who? 
the Father. So according to the teaching of Christ, the one who sent him, who identifies himself as the Father and your Father, he says you should worship him alone. Now I have no quarrel whatsoever to worship the one Jesus sent, the one who is in heaven, the one who has the kingdom and glory, who is God. Muslims in Norway are now establishing a masjid and dawah center to enhance the Norwegian dawah. If you donate to this cause, you will inshallah reap the rewards of thousands of Muslims coming back to Islam and many of those who become du'at and invite to Islam. So click the link and donate now and share the video for extra rewards.